Sun. Mm. Do you think um, Ethereum has a chance to uh, beat out Bitcoin as a store of value? Do you think it can become a, a larger uh, market cap let's say, coin in the future? Yes, yes, I think so. Um, the, the reason is, like to think that Bitcoin is the final word in, in what blockchains can do is, is kind of ridiculous because it's the first invention. You never have a situation where the first invention is literally the best and the final. That would be like saying, you know, the IBM mainframe when it was invented uh, and someone, it would be, imagine a group of people saying, this is the last computer we'll ever need. Uh, this is the only true computer. All subsequent computers are, are, uh, are shit computers or fake computers, you know, and then like, that's ridiculous. We, we know that's just not how things work. Um, also, Bitcoin is application specific technology. So it solves one use case. It solves for money and nothing else. And insofar as there are other use cases, uh, th these other chains will try to fulfill that, that those use cases. Right. So Ethereum is a generalized uh, s solution. Basically, you can you can use it for a variety of applications. Um, and, and that TAM has to be definitionally larger than the one simply for money. So one way to th think of it is Bitcoin um, kind of is the, the, the digital equivalent of gold. Whereas Ethereum is kind of like addresses the entire financial system. Um, in the financial system, gold is just a subset of things that you trade on the stock exchange, right? Gold is just a subset of money. So it's almost definitionally smaller than the TAM of Ethereum. And um, right now, I think Bitcoin is bigger just because it's had longer time to tell its narrative to convince buyers. Um, it has bigger mind share than Ethereum, mm -hmm. but it has more TAM than Ethereum. Yeah. So, like institutional buyers have been hammered finally to like maybe accept Bitcoin as something they should consider in their portfolio after t a decade. But the Ethereum story, people are still afraid to say the word on CNBC. So it's just earlier. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like um, Ethereum is like, you know, when f smart contracts first came out, it was like a great idea. But, but to figure out exactly what to do with it, it was a, was a challenge. But in the past couple of years, uh, especially with DeFi and other uses, it's like, oh, OK, there's some product market fit and the story is just getting started with Ethereum. I'm curious if Ethereum is able to flip Bitcoin in terms of market cap in the future, who knows how long that will be, if it's a few years or several years or whatever, what's the point of Bitcoin then? Like, can Ethereum be that store value, that digital gold, in addition to this, let's say, alternative crypto economy universe, right? Yeah. I don't think it's a zero sum game. I think people like, the reason why we have such diverse numbers of everything is because people have such diverse beliefs and value systems. Um, I, I think Bitcoin serves a perfectly good role as the most secure, the most like Lindy and, and like res censorship, censorship resistant digital store of value. I think if you just rank it on store of value uh, security, Bitcoin is still the most secure because it's just it is it requires more computation to verify. And Ethereum is going to switch over to a to a new kind of blockchain system called Store um, Proof of Stake, and I think many people would argue that is not as secure as as Bitcoin's proof of work algorithm. So, like just like gold has a role in the current modern financial system, even though we're no longer you know in Florentine times, um, even though we have Venmo and and all this digital stuff, gold is still a thing. And then we we came up with GLD, a ETF to trade this stuff. Like it it has. Um, anything that's had a thousand, two thousand years of history has a place and, and people recognize it for what it is. I think Bitcoin will always be kind of the original and, and people will respect it. And it could be the ultimate, like the safest way to store value when Ethereum and, the, and these other chains, because of the fact that they have a software roadmap, they can they have the potential to introduce bugs. They have the potential for mismanagement, for misgovernance. Um, there will be always be, I think, a need for something that is uh, call it permanent. Uh, immutable and ossified, which is kind of these are words that don't sound good, but these are words that like for Bitcoin, it, Bitcoin community are are positive features and people want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, one way to look at kind of Bitcoin actually is I think in the bigger picture of the entire kind of crypto kind of alternative this economic crypto system, where Bitcoin can be kind of like the easiest on ramp. The easiest exchange to get into that system, perhaps you know, the most popular at this moment. And um, but there is something much bigger than Bitcoin. You know, where if you look beyond just the Bitcoin conversations and you look to what's happening on um, 
Ethereum and other blockchains, there's a lot of innovation happening. There's a lot of companies, you know, creating stuff and people adopting stuff. And you mentioned the whole thing about uh, lending and borrowing, right? With let's say Compound and Aave and others. Like, what other kind of big use cases have you seen on Ethereum? You mentioned NFTs as you know another big one. So, are those kind of the two big ones recently that you've seen on on Ethereum, which is the lending, borrowing, kind of earning interest, and then number two, uh, NFTs. Um, are there any others? And if those are the two, like what about those two use cases are exciting to you? Sure. Um, I just put out a newsletter on kind of five actually useful things that uh, blockchains can do in 2021. Like these are things I think normal people would be interested in, not just like people in crypto. You ask someone in crypto what like, oh, hey, can 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 um, Ethereum do anything? They'll be like, yeah, you can you can be um, you can uh, mine for liquidity on uh, autom automated market maker. And you're like, what? What, what what does that mean and why would I be interested? They, they think very funny. Um, so I picked out things that like normal people would be interested in and, and you can check out the newsletter. But I still I, I think all of the things we talked about, um, lending is by far the most no brainer activity you can do because uh, just the number of people who have a bank account is in the you know billions and the number of people who would be interested in earning a above inflation rate return on just your savings is everyone on earth. So you could argue that's a TAM of seven and a half billion people right there. And uh, Ethereum will do that for you today, right? So if you have a thousand dollars and you want to earn some interest, if, if that's lingering in your bank account, that's earning less than 0.5% interest. Uh, you can shoot that a thousand dollars to Coinbase and convert it to a stable coin. So like USDC, these stable coins are not speculation instruments. They're pegged to the US dollar. So one for one, you turn into a thousand dollars USDC and then you deposit it into one of these crypto lending platforms. This is just software again, right? Um, this could be Aave, this could be Compound, this could be Yearn, dozens of options for you. And roughly speaking, it will earn you like 10, 15% APY on that uh, immediately. Um, a couple of things different about how this is versus uh, like a, a CD or term deposit bank. A, there's no term, so you can deposit at any time, you can withdraw at any time. There's no like limit. Like if you do a CD and you do it, you withdraw early, there are nasty penalties and all kinds of nonsense with that. Um, the second one is it's a variable interest rate, uh, call it, you know, account. So one day it could be 10%, the other day it could be 12 it fluctuates based on the market demand for this specific stable coin you're depositing. And the third is to use these pieces of software, these crypto lending protocols, like if you've ever used any traditional finance uh, software or, or app, the sign up process, the onboarding is like the, the most torturous part, right? It's like provide your name, your social security number. Um, I don't know, can you even open a bank account online? Like maybe go to your branch, it's just like the, the most onerous thing because financial products have the most onerous regulation. Um, on these crypto lending and borrowing platforms, you can get everything done without so much as even supplying an email address. No social security, no, no driver's license, not even an email address. You literally plug in your wallet address. You literally have a wallet, kind of like MetaMask, that's in your browser as a, as a plugin. And you, 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 you click lend and then it, it syncs with your wallet and then it happens like, and you can get this done in like five minutes. It's incredible. 